All right, so today we are going to look at different types of interest. So we're looking at uh, simple interest, compound interest, and continuously compounded interest over time. Okay. Um, a graphing calculator will be your best friend today. So that's why it was on the board that you needed one. So make sure you do have one. Remember, if you're doing mine, we are trading things. I got, I got blank pouches up there that are not going to work for me. Okay. You can type this into a non-graphing calculator. It's just not going to be fun. Okay. Here we go. Tamara was gifted $2,000 from her grandmother when she graduated from high school. Tamara plans to deposit the money into a savings account and does not intend to make any deposits or withdrawals after the initial deposit. She visits three different banks, each with a different type of savings account. This is very, very true. I told you this was going to be real world stuff. This is very true. Okay. The amounts of money and dollars Tamara would have on in, um, in each of the accounts after T years is shown in the table. So this is the different ways that the banks are going to accrue interest for her. Okay. Bank A has 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02 T. Bank B has 2,000 times 1 plus 0 0.02 over 12 raised to the 12 T. Bank C is 2,000 times E raised to 0 0.02 T, okay? So what it wants us to do is we're going to use our calculator to determine how much money we're going to have after 1, 25, or 50 years. So we're going to replace the T in each of these, okay? I'm going to show you how to type these in. Obviously, the first one's not, not that bad, but the other ones, you might not know how to type in E, the number E, by the way. Fun fact. The number E, yep. So about first one, here we go, clear it out. So we have 2,000, we got that, 2,000 parentheses, so we're typing it in exactly as we see it. One plus 0 0.02, this T is now a one. So I'm replacing it with the one and I'm closing my parentheses. Okay. When we push enter, we get a total of 240 years for year one okay i'm going to show you a trick because we have to do the exact same thing for 25 and 50 years right so instead of typing all of that in all over again i'm going to push second enter and it's going to pop back up and then i can move my cursor over and change that that one to a 25 and just make sure i have both parentheses on the end Push enter again, second enter, and then change my 25 to a 50. So there's my values across for bank A on your table. So for uh, in one year, she'll have $2,040. In 25 years, she'll have $3,000. And in 50 years, she'll have $4,000. What's wrong? What was the question? one single number you can just type on top of it yeah just type on top of it all right so once you plug in some of these crazy equations you really only have to plug it into your calculator one time because then you can do second enter and it brings it back up for you okay so bank b we have a new equation right two thousand parentheses all right we have one plus a fraction you see that one plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 so when i go to put the fraction in that's going to get its own set of parentheses whenever you type in a fraction it's smart to put it in parentheses so parentheses 0 0.02 divided by 12 close the parentheses for your fraction Close the parentheses for the growth factor. Are we all okay? Okay, and now we're gonna raise it to 12 times T. So raise it up, 12. 
Um, my first one is just one year, right? A couple ways to do it. You can do parentheses one. You can do times one. There's a couple of ways to do it. I don't care how you do it. Ooh, not two. One. So one year. There's my result. <clears throat> Remember, if your calculator does not bump up like mine does, you have to put your exponent in another set of parentheses. Parentheses shows grouping. So instead of typing that, all of that in again, what can I do? Second, enter. See how it says entry in blue? So it's going to bring back your last entry. And then you can move your cursor to go back to fill it in for 25 years. And then I'll let you fill it in for 50 years. Thirty-seven, and then we just got thirty-two, ninety-six point oh seven. What did y'all get for fifty years? There you go, fifty-four, thirty-two, and four cents. So so far, which bank do you like better? So far, I like B. I'm definitely getting more money along the way, right? So far, B is nice. All right, now let's do it for bank E, I'm sorry, bank C, which uses the number E. So let's, because the equation isn't that scary. We just don't know how to put in the number E. All right, I'm going to clear this out so it's not as confusing. So for bank C, we have 2,000 times the number E. It is not this green one on top of sign. There is a number E. If you look next to the 4, there's an LN button. And above it in blue, you should see an E. Do we see that? So we're going to push second. And then that L in button, which is next to your four. Mm -hmm. There should be the, let, the number E. And an exponent should pop up. We're going to fill that in with 0 0.02 um, times one year. Make sure you get 20, 40, and 40 cents. All right, let me know what you got for 25 years. 32, 97, 44, good. And then 50 years. 54, 36, 56, good. And just one more time to bring it back. Second, enter, brings it back. Change that one to a 25. Second, enter, go back, change the 25 to a 50. Good. So are we comfortable with calculators? Okay, because the, the equations we're going to use, they're going to be fun. Okay. But again, once we type it in one time, because of the second enter, we only have to plug it in that one time. Benefit of this graphing, guys. All right. So now, what I would like for you and partner to do, I want you to discuss. What do you notice about the differences in the number of years uh, in the accounts as the number of years increase? Okay, so talk to your partner. How does bank A, well, I guess this is just all together. Hold on, hold on. I'm confusing myself. Okay, this is just a general question. This is not the specific one yet. In general, what do we notice about the accounts after each year? We are increasing, yes. All, all accounts are increasing. Okay. 
um, over the years. So as my years get bigger, so does the money in the bank. Okay? The table goes with number four. So number four wants you to be specific. Okay? Which account offers the most return on Tamara's investment over time? We think it's C. Think it's B. Think it's A. We like C. Okay, how come? How is bank A changing? Okay, so it's a thousand every twenty five. What is that each year? It's gonna be forty dollars each year. Yep. So this bank earns a constant interest of forty dollars a year. Okay, but the constant rate is that that's gonna be like a line, right? If it's constant, if it's the same thing every year, that's just like a line model. Whoop, go back, please. Thank you. How about bank B? Do you think it was linear or was it exponential on how it grew? Probably exponential. And look at the equation itself. See how the, the equation actually has an exponent now? Yeah? So this is going to be exponential. So exponential growth. Okay, um, we can tell by looking at the equation there's an actual exponent. We can also tell by how the difference is. So from year one to 25, there's a difference of what? Okay, and then from year 25 to year 50 is about how much? Two thousand. So do we see how the 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 difference was less than? So it didn't grow as fast, but then that second chunk it grew faster, right? That's another way to see that's exponential. Okay. Um, and then how about bank B? That's also going to be exponential. Again, the equation shows an actual exponent in it. Um, is it the same? Is it less or is it more rapid than bank C? I mean bank B. It's growing faster. Good. So it is more rapid. Than bank B. If we're looking at the data, okay, after year one, we're already three cents ahead, right? And then we are jumping up by more increments each time. So this proves that we like bank C the best. Okay, each one of these is a different example of the different kinds of interest. Okay. Our very first one, Bank A, was an example of simple interest happening. Okay, this is Bank A. Simple interest is a method of computing interest um, where the um, from the original principal loan, no matter how much the money has accrued so far. So the formula A equals P times 1 plus RT is used to calculate the final amount owed or saved where A is the final amount, P is the principal, or like what you started off with, T is the number of years, and R is the interest rate. So this is when it was just a line. There's a constant rate of change. It's the same exact thing every single time, right, Brandon? Right? Very basic. Okay. Next, compound interest. Okay, this is the method of computing interest. Interest is computed from the original principal, and the interest earned over a certain period of time. Sounds like it's the same thing almost. But look at my formula. The formula A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to N times T is used to calculate the final amount. A is still your final amount. P is still what you start with. 
T is still number of years, but see now we have that N thrown in there. N is the number of times it's being compounded. So typically with simple interest, it's just happening once a year, the end, okay? But in the middle one might be like a monthly thing or a weekly thing or a daily thing, okay? Um, on when they're building the interest on top of it. Obviously the more times they build the interest, the more the money is going to increase, okay? So this is an example of bank B where you're, it's happening more than once. Okay. And then bank C is an example of continuously compounding interest. Okay. This is because of the number E. Okay. I know we don't know exactly what E is yet. We're going to get there. There's a lovely green poster that shows it. It's kind of like pi. It's a number that never, that never ends. Okay. It's another one of those irrational numbers. Okay. But it is the number E. Okay. So if it's going to, if the base is a number that never ends, it is continuously compounding, okay? A is still the final amount, P is still the principal, or what you started off with, T is number of years, and R is the rate, okay? Difference this time being your growth factor is always the number E, okay? So this is an example of bank C from above, okay? So continuously is when there's a little E in there, okay? Compounded is when it's being compounded more than once during a year. Monthly, daily, weekly, quarterly, semi-annually, all that good stuff. We good? Questions on the different types before we play with them? All right, so before we get into being compounded more than once a year, it's great to know what all those words I just said meant. Okay, annually, weekly, semi-annually, monthly, daily, and daily and quarterly. So, real quick, with your partner, can you match up what your n is going to be equal to if something is being compounded by one of those definitions? Okay, is it going to be 12 times a year, once a year, 365 times a year, four times a year, 52 times a year, or twice a year? All right, so it's a little matchy thing. Ready, set, go. All right, so we have a description of each type, okay? We have a description of simple interest, compound interest, and continuously compounded interest. They want you to now make the equation and then use the equation, okay? On the bottom of the front page, it has the different equations for you, okay? So looking at the front for simple interest, it told me the equation was A equals P1 plus RT. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones. For compounded interest, it was our starting value times one plus R divided by N raised to the N of T. And then my continuously uses the E, so this is part for short, PE raised to the RT. So, there we go. There's our different formulas. <clears throat> Remember, A is your final amount. P is your principal, or what you start off with. R is your rate. T is your time in years. And for that middle one, N is going to be the number of times it happens each year. Okay? Are we going to replace E with a number? No, never, because E is a number. E is already a number. Don't change it. All right, help me set up the first one. How can I figure out the amount after seven years? Well, what am I going to use for A? We don't know yet, right? That's what we're trying to find out. What did I start off with, according to the uh, description? 7,512. One plus, what was my rate? It's 3.75%. But what is that as a rate? 0 0.0375. So make sure we change our percentages into rates. And I'm going to run out of room. 0 0.0375. Um, and my, what is my T for this one? It is 7. Okay, just so I can save room. 
seven five one two three seven five times seven. Okay. Mm. What'd you get? All right, I heard nine four. So if you are still typing it in, don't stop typing it in. So type it in and make sure we do get the same thing. That's 1.0375, right? Oh, no, it's not. What am I doing? We have to multiply first. A uh, duh. One plus. Was that 0.2625? Are we getting 9483.90? Yes, okay. <clears throat> go ahead and figure out what it's going to be for 27 years. Since you already have that in your calculator, go ahead and do it for 27 years. So we are investing $7,512 at an interest rate of 3.75 APR. That stands for annual percentage rate. Annual meaning once a year, right? It's a constant <clears throat> increase. When you start turning 18, you're going to be getting credit card, credit cards in the mail that, that they want you to sign up for it. You best read that fine print. It's like, oh, we'll give you $500, but your APR is 25%. That's insane. It's insane. No, throw it away. <laughs> They're going to charge you 25% on top of what you spend. Don't do it. It's bad. I got one. I should have saved it. It might still be in my trash can. I got one yesterday. They're trying to get me to get like a Disney card, but it was uh, it was twenty percent APR. No, thank you. I'm good. I'm good. So watch out for those. They're not very like easy to find either. They're sneaky. It's there, but you got to look for it. Legally, they have to tell you. They don't legally have to put it in large print. So go find it. All right, what did you get for 27 years? There you go, good. 15, 11790 again. We go with that? Okay. All right, let's do our compound. So, what if we take the same money, 7,512? is invested at an interest rate of 3.75% APR, but now it's being compounded monthly, okay? So we don't know our amount. We know my principal, it's still the same. One plus, our rate is still the same, right? We have an N now. What is the N going to be? How do you know it's 12? Because it says monthly. Good. And then 12 times the number of years. Because that's what? That's 84 months, right? So in seven years, it's being compounded 84 times. Do we need help typing it into the calculator? One plus, here's our rate divided by our 12 months. Close my factor, raise it up to 12 months times seven years. So if you're not sure how to type it in, that's what it should look like when you type it in. What'd you get? There you go, yes. 97.62 and 93 cents. What's up? Um, check and make sure you're not missing something. You might be missing a number somewhere or a decimal or a parenthesis, possibly. Nine, seven, 
six, two, nine, three. All right, if you're good with that one, go ahead and do it for 27 years. All right, so after 27 years, you should get $20,643.96. Yeah? So a lot of calculator work. So be careful if you, if you type in the wrong thing. It would, it would suck. So that's why I want to make sure that we're, we're um, we know what we're typing and why we're typing it. All right, and my last one. Let's make a prediction. It's compounded continuously. What do you think is going to happen? You think it's going to be more money or less money? You think it's going to be more? Maybe less. Uh, let's find out. Let's find out. All right, we are finding out final amount. Our P is still 7512. Do I change the E to a number? No, trick question. E is already a number. So leave E there. Our rate is still 0 0.0375. And the first example is for seven years. All right, let's remember how to type it in. Boop. Clear this out. 7512. Remember, where, where do we find our E? Where is it? It is next to the 4. Second, this LN button, which stands for natural log, by the way. We'll work with this later. Soon, actually. I'm excited. <laughs> Point zero three seven five times our 7 years. Make sure you're getting 9766.93. What's up? Try again. Yep. Or in your in your exponent, remember you can also put up here times seven. Oop, go down. If you wanted to, you should get the same thing. Ah, okay. There you go. Okay. So this should give us 97.66. Go ahead and do 27 years. Ah. <laughs> like, oh, nice. All right, so if you had to pick one, which one would you pick if you were trying to earn money? Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're shorting yourself about $5,000. If you wanted the most money, I would want orange, right? The compounded continuously. <laughs> no, you are, you are, oh, I guess, hold on. Hold on. Yep. Yep. You right. You right. I was thinking about a different. I'm sorry. Cause you are investing the money. Well, no, but if it earns, if you're investing money, you are earning money. Yes. So that, that word investing means you're earning it. If you were making charges, if you were purchasing something, that's when you would owe more. Does that make sense? No, that's another thing to bring up. So yeah. So in that case, that's going to be our favorite. Okay. I know you don't have colors, so we definitely need to make sure we do this one. So look, these graphs, let's Jennings deposited the same amount of money in three different accounts. Okay. One of the, uh, one account offers simple interest. One offers compound interest and one offers continuously compounding interest. Which one of these graphs do you think matches with which kinds? Okay. What you think? Green is simple. You think green is simple? Yeah. Okay. Why? Justify it. There you go. If you want to. Good, because it's, it's more of a rapid growth. 
And so this one is compounded. And it's because it is exponential, but it's just not as fast. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, so compounded and compounded continuously, pretty close together. Okay, it's continuously though, just a tad bit more rapid, which right there doesn't seem like it's much, but if you're talking about, depending on how many years it's going by and what it's being compounded per year, to show the big difference. All right, you ready? We're almost there. Here we go. We have a representation here. It wants you to figure out what type of interest is being described and how do you know? So we have $31,000 invested at an interest rate of 2.01% APR compounded quarterly. We're not doing any math. It just wants to know what kind of interest is this? Simple, compounded, or compounded continuously? Okay, justify. So because it said, it literally says the word compounded. That's that's a good hint, right? So compounded is used and it states quarterly. So we know it's happening multiple times in one year, okay? It's not continuous. It's only happening how many times? It's only happening four times. Continuous means it's always happening. Okay, so not continuous. All right. <clears throat> Number 11. I want you and friend to do 11 and 12, okay? 11, Selena believes that the function shows model simple interest. Oh, we can do it together. This is a quick one. Explain why she's wrong. It's wrong because... There is an exponent, yes. So how does that make that not simple? So why is that not simple? Because simple interest, if it's constant, it's going to be linear. Simple interest is a line. It's a linear function, <clears throat> so that's why it should not be it. All right. Miguel took out a loan from his bank to buy a new car. The interest rate on the life of the loan is 9.41%. That's so much. Wow. What type of interest would be best for Miguel? I don't know. The wrong one. The wrong bank. Yes, yeah, simple would definitely be this. How come? Because in all our examples, it earns the least amount of money, right? So the simple one is going to cost him less. Okay. Um, but which one would be best for the bank? The bank is going to try to get him to do compounded continuously. That's crazy. Maybe it's that now because of the market, but woo! <laughs> Man, I think my first car, and it's, all, it's based off of like your credit and stuff, and so my credit was nothing. I think it was like a 6%, and the guy like did me a favor, and that's even high. Um, my car now was not that. I got it at like two point something percent. So, have good credit. Moral of that story, too. Helps you save money later. Be good with money and go save money. 